Yo, what's up guys? Today, I think it's gonna be my best video yet, or at least my most fun video personally. I've had a few people request me do this video because I think people struggle to correlate the dots. Oh yeah, by the way, don't judge these glasses. They may look fashionable and I may look good in them, but it's so I don't squint, all right? So yeah, I'm not gonna have these uh, squinting eyes the whole time trying to read my notes. And I needed notes for this one because there's a lot to get off. So without further ado, how I started in business and how it carved my mindset. So first things first, I grew up, I had an entrepreneurial dad. I always wanted to be in business and there was no other thing I wanted to do. I didn't want to be anything else other than a businessman. So at 11 years old, I was just starting comprehensive school, like secondary school. I don't know what you call it in America, but I borrowed 50 pounds off my dad. We were out in Spain and I bought sunglasses at the market for three pound a pair. And I took them to school for my first day of school and I started selling them for 10 pound a pair at school and they did well. And I, in the end, turned that into capital for chewing gum and cigarettes. It wasn't long and I would sell the chewing gum and cigarettes. It wasn't smoking cigarettes. You shouldn't smoke cigarettes and you shouldn't sell them either. That was just me being an idiot, you know, or trying to get ahead. I wouldn't condone that now. If my son was selling cigarettes at school, I'd give him a slap. But anyway, they wrote a letter home to my, my dad. My dad went mad about it all. And in the end, it transpired that he wasn't actually mad about the fact that I was selling all this stuff. He was mad about the fact that I got caught, and rightly so. I was being this brash little idiot. I was telling everyone who cared to listen, I'm selling this. I think I was cheeky. My tutor would come up to me. Mrs. Gallagher, Gallagher or Gallagher, I can't remember her name. She came up to me and she says, what's that you're selling? And I was like, sunglasses, do you want some? And it wasn't long until I got all these letters back from the headmaster saying that they were going to eject me from school if I continued to do it. So my dad loses his head and... It is what it is. You'd expect it. And it was me just being a cocky little shit. Anyway, the business is going pretty well. Like my, my school business. I used the capital to start an eBay business at 13, which it didn't take very long until that was doing really well. I was importing goods from China, selling it on eBay. And I was making around 200 pound a week as a sideline. I never had pocket money. I never had a job. I was just doing that at school. It was really, really cool. And yeah, I was doing great. Like I had all the best gear. I've always been a flash fucker. So yeah, that is what it is. And now this, this one's my favorite one, you know, because it still sticks with me today, but it sticks with me today for different reasons. I was in art and I was chilling with my friends. And really, you know what? We all took art. We took art because it was an easy class to take, right? And my friend jokes around. And he says, oh, uh, Miss Lewis, her name was Miss Lewis, a real scumbag, Miss Lewis, James has been smoking weed, and I hadn't been smoking weed. I hadn't smoked weed. I didn't even start smoking weed till I was like 27, 28. But I stopped now for my New Year's resolution. But anyway, that's a different story. I say, no, I haven't been smoking weed, and she was good because you're dopey enough. And I thought, huh? And that was like, Kr -r 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 -r. dopey enough? Like, that was hurtful. Like, it even sounds hurtful knowing how I was. You know, I was a kid. I was in like, 14 years old and some teachers calling me dopey and I knew my dad wasn't dopey so I was thinking like am I gonna be the dopey one of the family but yeah you know it is what it is and ultimately like who's the dopey one now but I get more annoyed when I look back on that because I think I wonder how many kids she says that to I wonder how many people she insults like it's such a callous comment like people need to be very cognizant of how you speak to a kid even your own kids because stuff sticks with you and it's really really disgraceful it and then I fail my GCSEs and then suddenly you start to think like oh shit maybe Miss Lewis is right maybe I am a dumb bastard anyway I couldn't get into sixth form with my friends and for me that was kind of heartbreaking at the time because they all got to go to sixth form and I didn't have the grades because I only got a I got a C in art which was the one she called me dopey in I guess a C is nothing to be proud of but anyway it was like one of the one subjects I didn't fail I got a B in business everything else it was just yeah, fail, fail, fail. I go to college. Luckily, my friend was going to college as well to study business. I was doing, doing good. I, I was doing pretty good for the first year. I started working for a bathroom shop. And halfway through, I decided to take more hours at the bathroom shop. And I dropped out of college because money was more important for me. Now, I'm not ashamed of that. I think that life experience is more important than education anyway. I think a lot of people get stuck in education, come out with loads of debt. And everyone has their own choice, so I'm not trying to tell you which route to take. But for me, education wasn't right. I'm not a, I'm not a bookworm. I struggle with detail. 
Like, yeah, it is what it is. I left to work at the bank after the bathroom shop. And all the time, I'd always been doing markets on the weekends, you know. So I'd be, like, buying and selling golf clubs, mascara, Christmas. Whatever line was going on, Christmas cards at Christmas, like, every weekend, without fail. I wouldn't go out on a Saturday night. I'd make sure I'm up bright and early on a Sunday and I'd run the market. I left to work at the, at the bank. That was a bathroom shop. I got fired after coming in with a black eye one time because I'd been a toe rag with my ex-girlfriend. And yeah, I, I mean, I deserve the black eye, but like, that is what it is. It's funny. But luckily, just as that happened, my dad goes, you may be at work today. What happened? I remember I lied to him and I said, oh, no, they just didn't need me today. But like, thank fuck, Dreams offered me a job that day. Dreams, a bed shop. And that was the best thing that ever happened to me at the time because Dreams was my first real job where the effort you put in, you got back with rewards. So like, I remember I was only 30 grand a year and I was 18 and that was like crazy. 30 grand a year, 18, back in like 2006, 2007, that was, that was big money. I mean, I was killing it. Me and my best friend, we were fucking top sales. I remember there was times where like, we was, we, we'd be top in the company, it was crazy. It was so much fun. Anyway, I took what I learned from dreams and I decided to start a business in bathrooms. And I went into bathroom retail. Anyway, it wasn't long until I realized that I wasn't as smart as I thought I was. I took everything to, to this new bathroom venture thinking that all of what my bosses had said was wrong. And I knew way, way more than them, of course. And yeah, it didn't take a half second until we went bust. And I remember I was so depressed. I really cruxed my talent on it. I didn't actually realize the abundance mindset at that point where like, it doesn't matter if you try nine times and you work one time. That's all that needs to happen. I just tried once, failed once, and I beat myself up about it. But I learned so, so much. And I only later came to understand the value of that venture later. But yeah, I was 35 grand in debt. I was in a very dark place. Wasn't emotionally strong enough to be dealing with those kinds of pressures at the time. But it started to mold me. I went back to the market. I started selling golf clubs again, jewelry, really anything that was like hot selling at the time that I could have moved. And I was making okay money hair straighteners, some stuff that I shouldn't have been selling in the evenings and just, just whatever I could do to get by. And I was always doing well. Like I, I would never be someone sat on the sofa broke. I would just do whatever I had to do. I always had that mindset. My dad starts to get concerned about some of the stuff that I'm getting up to. And he introduces me to his friend and he says, look, I think you're going down a dark path, James. I want you to introduce, introduce me to his friend who is selling on eBay and doing really, really well on eBay. Anyway, he says, pick something you're passionate about and let's go from there. And I, he goes, but please just stop doing all this other stuff. So I said, okay, deal. So my dad lent me 15,000 pounds. It's really, really nice, really amazing thing to do. And I appreciate that not everyone's parents are going to be in a position to do that for them, but banks, whatever. I mean, I, I, you could have done this business on a thousand pounds, right? I'm just giving you my anecdote as to how it worked. Like I actually, when I had the 15 grand, I was so worried about losing it. I never dipped below 10 anyway. So you could have started this business with five grand. And I think that you guys could work a job and save five grand, all right? So just don't worry too much about that. I start selling poker sets in the garage of my family home on eBay. I start to go really well. The poker sets turn to phone cases. And by 23, I make a million pound. And I mean... I'm not talking about turned over a million pound. I made a million pound net profit. So like 23 years old, making a million pound. I thought I shat gold. Suddenly I had all the car I want. I had that. I had a property. It was, everything had gone crazy. And I had more money than I could spend. I thought I was hot shit. That went on for about two years. By 25, I guess I was so like egotistical and I was so lost in the source that the business starts failing. I get involved with my friend. I start a new business with him. His business goes really well. We make like 90 grand net profit in the first three months. So I literally think like, shit, anything I do, I'm making money. And by 26, I trust him too much and he robs me of the business. He takes somewhere around 180,000 pounds out of the business. He does some things he shouldn't have done. And then he goes to the ground and no one can find him. And I also have to settle a court debt with him, which is 110 grand. So all in all, he costs about 290 grand. And at the point... We didn't have that in liquidity. It nearly ruined us. It nearly took my business with it. Super annoying, super depressing. I actually learned a lot about human nature during those times, which was great. So, I mean, all of this is a learning curve. Like I say, guys, 
It's never a loss. It's always a lesson. I nearly lose the business. I got heavily into drugs, very mentally weak. And it really came to a head. I was in a stag do in Budapest with my friends. And I was taking a lot of drugs. I was acting like a clown. And my mindset was very, very weak. I felt my need to justify myself to people who I didn't need to justify myself to. And yeah, next thing I wake up in Stanford Airport with a black eye, like just a mess. And I got home and I reshaped my mind. And that was really what carved me. From that point, I realized, all right, James, is it you, no more of this shit, no more of this weak stuff, no more cruxing on drugs, grow the fuck up, become a man. So I reshaped my mind. I realized I couldn't make more money. So I got fitter, I got smarter, and I got more headstrong, and then the money followed. So my whole thought was, I was cruxing my value on how much money I could make. So when I couldn't make money, I thought, oh, I'm shit, I'm this, I'm that. So I thought, look, I don't think this money stuff's gonna happen overnight. It's a build. It took me years to do it in the first place. So let's just focus on the stuff that I can change today. I can lose a little bit of weight today. I can get a little bit fitter today. I can get a bit smarter today. So I listen to more podcasts. By the time I'm 30, I'm back on track, but with a different sense of track. So when the money comes in, I don't hold any, any um, ego on it. I just think, you know, it is what it is. If it comes and it goes, I'm not going to start thinking I'm hot shit because I got it. I can enjoy it, but if it comes and goes, I'm not, I have no attachment to that. If I have to sell a car, I have to sell a car. Anyway, I just bought this Porsche. I thought, great, I'm back on track. This is brilliant. I took all my friends out for dinner on my 30th, and this one friend came to me and he says, oh, uh, how's business going? I said, yeah, it's going really well. I just got this Porsche. He goes, oh, it's going well, but, but not like it was though, right? And I thought, hee hee, what a sly little comment to make. I was like, but I will show you. By 32, I was the most polished, most unrockable version of myself. And the business was at the highest peak of success it'd ever been, significantly better than when it had been at 23. And by the way, guys, I'm only on my journey. Where I'm going to go, I'm going high, high. And I don't care if business goes down, up, down, up between. By the time I'm 40, I am going to be mega. I just want you guys to kind of understand that this stuff does not happen overnight. I think I started my business at 11 years old when I borrowed that 50 pound off of my dad for sunglasses. And I'm now 32, 33 in a few months, and I've been in business that whole time. It's a learning curve. Do not expect to start a business today and be where you want to be in a year unless something really, really goes right. It's a curve and everything's a lesson. I don't want you guys to approach this market where you think like, oh, you'll keep sliding into girls' inboxes, 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 and then never ever get hindered by rejection. Try a business one time, you get failed. Try to make that sale one time, you get, oh, oh it's never going to work for me. Nah, that's a defeatist attitude. I want you carved from stone. I look back at some of the things I used to be ashamed of, and I think, you know what? They created me. They're amazing. I, I lavish in the fact that I was that weak because now look at me. Now I'm unrockable. And the people, whoever did any of those things, whoever shaded me, I think, he, he, it makes it so much sweeter. And there's one thing actually I missed, and I talked about it in a previous video, is when I was 30, I got robbed for 170 grand by a supplier. And before that would have rocked me. And the reason I was so proud of that is it was serious, serious money, and it nearly bankrupted us. But what happened was I realized that I truly am that guy now. Because instead of like turning to drugs or getting anything near emotional about it. I just put my shoulders back and thought, right, how do we fix this? I ain't losing this business. We're fixing this. And we fixed it. We got out of it. And it could have been easy to wallow. I did not wallow. That is basically it. This is why it comes down to mindset, guys. Do not wallow. Do not think, oh, lucky him, lucky this. Bruh, most of you guys, if you haven't like carved yourself through it, these are situations which would break some of you. I'm telling you. You try earning a million pound at 23, then it wanes to nothing. I know it sounds like, oh, yeah, yeah, but you had the million in the first place. No, no. The thought of peaking at 23 is a horrible feeling. But now I don't care. I know that if any time this business would go down, I know I could get it back. I got a complete abundance mindset. I'm completely confident in my ability to make money. I know I'm going to be mega. That is what it is. Like I don't care if this podcast is getting a few views right now or a lot of views right now. I know it's going to be mega. So... I already see how it's going to be. 
I truly believe you need to be looking at what it looks like to be the guy you want to be. I don't let the opinions of these people who don't have the balls to do it themselves even rock you. Who gives a shit? Use it as motivation. But I'm going to go back to the teacher thing. She shouldn't do that. Because when I failed my GCSEs and when my business failed, I started to think, shit, was Mrs. Lewis right? Was, am I dumb? Am I dopey? And I think, how many other kids has she done that to who it hasn't worked out quite so well for or they didn't have the mentality that I had? Because I think that's a disgrace. I would have fired her on the spot if I was a teacher. If someone said that to one of my members of staff, I would kick her to the curb there and then. She wouldn't even have a chance to explain shit to me. She'd be out. And you can see, guys, I'm passionate about it now because I know the kind of damage that I can do to a kid. Luckily, I used it as motivation. But there was a time at, after my business had gone bust, the bathroom business and a lot of debt, and I started to think, maybe I'm not as smart as my dad. Maybe that teacher was right. Maybe I am dopey. And then my business has its most success. Well, I'm smoking a lot of weed, so hee hee. <laughs> you know what? I'm not petty. I just fucking find it funny. But anyway, I want you to follow me. I want you to all understand that we all have hard times. It's what we make of them. Don't feel the goal is too far and too unattainable because like I say, it's a huge journey. You got to enjoy the journey. Don't try to race towards the end light. Do you know the worst thing in the world would be to win the lottery? Because you'd be bored as hell and you wouldn't appreciate the money. I'd say you're better off earning a hundred grand that you work your ass off for than being given a million. Because you just get given a million and you won't have any pride of spending it. You won't spend the same. Do not take handouts. Earn this money for yourselves. I'm going to make you kings. Follow me, guys. Subscribe to my channel. Like I said, I put this video out because a few people have requested it. It's all about the mindset and resilience. Once you master those. And I was very resilient in business, but I let things rock me too much. And like I said, it was around 26, 27, the drugs, my friend robbing me, me losing my head with like alcohol and drugs in Budapest. I came out. I reshaped it. I became made from stone. These things happen for a reason, guys. It's only if you wallow and get sorry for yourself that they don't. Let's meet you kings.